Hello, and welcome to Hello Main Street. I am your host, Monica Sanchez. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss another episode. And to support our podcast, please share us and tag me, Monica Sanchez, NIA, on your Instagram. I would love that and love to speak with more entrepreneurs. So today we're going to be talking about how to start a business. And so why do I bring this up? Because I've talked about some other things already where you've already actually started a business. Uh, but I recently attended an event uh, that was hosted for the community. It was free of charge, um, helping businesses to get licensed. And as I'm sitting there, a, a lot of questions came up for them. And what's really interesting for me is that I've already been down this road. I actually help people to buy and sell businesses. And so a lot of times when the business owner is new, I will give them a template. And so I was like, I'm going to start sharing this template with everybody because, you know, that is what we're here for, right? We're here to lift one another up, share our knowledge and our information with one another and to be able to support each other. So I'm just going to go through this little checklist here because these are were a lot of questions that came up and they were repetitive for these uh, business owners. And congratulations to you, those who just recently got licensed to become entrepreneurs uh, here to support you and very excited for your journey. So let's get started. So here I'm going to share another screen. Let's see, add the stream. Okay, are you guys seeing this? I don't think so. There we go. Okay, here we go. So uh, buyer checklist. You know, buying a business, whether it's existing or you're establishing a business, it's still the same procedure. So don't get overwhelmed. Uh, I sent this checklist already to some people, and then I am sharing this with you now. So the one thing that I was taught by a, um, a bookkeeper, I, when I first got started, I'm like, I don't even know where to begin. So she said, the best thing you can do is to keep your books accurate and to really start utilizing the, the information and, and setting up a process where it's going to be smooth. It's going to be easy going for you. Um, and then once you set yourself on the right way of how to uh, keep your books, you won't have to go backwards. Um, so one key thing that she taught me and I want to share with everybody else. So thank you, Melody is save your receipts. Um, usually your business, when you're starting out as an entrepreneur, you may be bootstrapping your business, right? Which means you're just using monies that you have um, that are readily available to you. You haven't gotten a loan for the business or anything like that yet. So any of those receipts, any money that you're putting into the business is considered owner contribution. So hold on to your receipts, take photos of them, um, and then you can upload them into a system. Uh, myself, I use Zero, but then you can also use QuickBooks. Um, so there's a couple different variations. I use Zero because one, that's what Melody set me up with, and two, it costs less than QuickBooks, and I still get all the same features and benefits. Um, so there's that. The next one is, um, you know, if you're going to purchase a business, you need to submit uh, monies for a transactional attorney. Um, disregard that if you're like, no, I'm starting a business from scratch. Not, no need to worry. So skip that piece. Are you applying for a loan? Uh, that would be another question you're going to have for yourself. Um, and if you do, um, how will you be funding your business? They're usually going to ask you for um a uh, plan of action of what you're going to have, uh, your uh, business proposal, all of that to see what that's going to look like. And then also keep in mind, if you're bootstrapping your own endeavors, then how much money are you going to allot to the business and how much money are you going to set aside for expenses that you weren't anticipating to uh, occur? So keep that in mind. A lot of times people go in and go, oh, I'm only going to put in 10,000 in the business and then that's it. I'm not going to add anything extra. And then you'll see oftentimes businesses will close quickly because they don't have enough of the funding to keep themselves afloat because it's going to take a little bit longer for them to generate revenue. So the other one that I had a gentleman ask me was, how do I know if the business is available? Uh, the business name that he wanted. He didn't want to share it with me and I'm okay with that. Um, so I gave him a link. So right here, you would go to the Department of Revenue and I have a hyperlink here. So you would go in there and go find business, type in the name. If the name does not show in there, then kudos to you, you get to keep the name. 
All right, so let's keep scrolling down here. What kind of business is it that you are going to set up? This may be something that you may have to inquire with your bookkeeper and then also with your tax person. Um, so are you going to be an LLC, uh, which is usually a standard way that a lot of entrepreneurs will do that, uh, sole proprietorship or corporation. Um, so there's a different variations, again, that is not my area of forte. And so that's therefore I would ask you to speak with them to see what's going to be in your best interest. The next one is to apply for a business license. Uh, so these I put in order uh, because it can be uh, a little overwhelming, right? So the first one is apply for your EIN. That's your, um, your uh, oh gosh, sorry, I can't think of the name, but I'm sure you guys know what I'm referring to. Uh, it's, an, it's an identification, uh, employee, employer identification number, there, I caught it. Um, and so they will either say, there's oftentimes they'll just say, what is your EIN number or what is your social security number? Uh, for a business, I tend to use my EIN number and not so much my social security. So again, it's up to you. Uh, and then the next step is once you're done and you've applied for that, then you're going to go on to the Secretary of State and then you're going to form your LLC or your corporation, whichever one that is going to be. After that, that step number three is then you're going to go on to the Department of Revenue, DOR website, which again, I have my link here. And then you're going to apply for your UBI number, a uh, unique business identification number. Um, and this is what you'll need also to um, open up your bank accounts. So once you're done with those three steps, then you can move on to which bank am I going to be using? Um, I highly recommend that you always have a separate bank account from your personal account. Um, so you're not commingling any money, um, keep things separate. It's going to help better with taxes in the end. Um, and it's going to make things a little bit more simplified for you. Um, how my new bookkeeper had re recommended that I do is to go ahead and set up two separate accounts. So one is for accounts receivable. So for monies that are coming in and then, of course, accounts payable for all my bills that are going out. So that was really helpful to me. I used to have it where it was just a checkings and a savings, but I didn't understand the differences. Um, and so now if I see any money that's actually going reverse other than the monies that I'm putting towards my bills, any kind of odd transactions that come out of the accounts payable, it will be easier for myself and my bookkeeper to flag um, to know that there's something fraudulent happen happening there because usually the flow of the money is how it goes in and out of the account is off. Um, and that would be a huge red flag for all of us. So. That was why I set it up the way I did, and I'm glad that they shared that with me. So thank you. Um, and so you'll open up your bank account, and then you'll have a business credit card, possibly. It's up to you. Again, you'll have to go through the steps of parameters with your bank. Um, they'll probably check your uh, credit history, um, your score, all of that to determine how much they would be lending you. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I also put in here for a bookkeeper, and I noticed that I didn't take Valerie's name out of here, so I'm going to do it right now as we speak. Um, so setting up an account and recording system. So this is something that you would want to do with a bookkeeper. Um, a lot of sometimes people will use a CPA, but when you're starting out new, uh, such as myself, um, I just used a bookkeeper. And then when I was done, I, she would prepare my taxes, prepare my paperwork so I can hand over to the um, tax preparation person. And then they would go ahead and they would submit my filings for me. Um, I don't use a CPA because I can't afford all of their fees. Um, so I use a, big, a bookkeeper uh, and then go from there. So it's all dependent upon you and how you want to spend your money. That's just the way I do it. All right. Um, and then let's talk about um, insurance because a lot of people are like, okay, I started my business. I got my license. I and now what? You know, uh, you're going to need insurance. Uh, so if you're like a contractor, right, you're maybe getting needing to get licensed and bonded. That's something that uh, an insurance person can help you with. If you have any questions, I have lots of people that can help you. Um, it's same with the bookkeeper. And then uh, you'll want to get at least general liability, depending upon what kind of business it is. And that's when your um, 
your insurance person will ask you several questions about your business. Maybe is it going to be in your home? How are you going to use it? So on and so forth. So just be prepared and ready to answer these questions. This is how they determine what the risk level will be in order for the for you to have your insurance. So I highly recommend it to get at least general liability. Um, and then always I do would check on an annual basis to make sure you are above board with your business and you have everything that you need. Um, and then a key person insurance. Now, this is a lot of things that this is something that a lot of people don't talk about, but is really important. Let me just tell you a quick story. Um, I had a person, actually it was two people. One was the person who had, um, they both had a business. Um, one was a silent partner. He had handled all the funds, gave the money, didn't do anything else on the day-to-day -day stuff. And then you had the person who oversaw the daily transactions, uh, the management of the employees, and so on and so forth. Um, they were deciding they were going to sell their business. Uh, and, and, and the gentleman, he was in his thirties. Um, so very, he looked healthy to me, uh, went to bed one day, uh, and he didn't wake up. So now it put the other person, uh, who was the silent partner in a scramble, right? Um, they didn't have key person insurance on each other. So therefore he couldn't continue to keep the doors open for the business. And because the silent partner didn't know enough about the day-to-day -day operations that he couldn't even step in at that time. So having those monies to be able to continue to keep the business afloat is not only important for your partner, but then think about your, um, Think about your spouse or your family, right? They're going through a grieving process. And if that was the case, then they may not have the mental capacity to be able to take over the business or it may be something that is so um, in depth. Maybe it's an attorney or something like that. A, um, a family owner couldn't just take over, right? It'd have to be somebody else, maybe a partner. So keeping that in mind, Having key a person insurance on one another is really important. One, to keep your business afloat, keep it going, and then also to help out your family members and your partner, whoever that may be, to keep the business going for you. All right. And then let's talk about setting up a POS system. That's a purchase a sale system. Um, and with that, there are several, right? You can either find a merchant services, um, really keep in mind that they, they do have fees that are attached to these services um that's how they get paid right and it's i understand that everyone gets paid for a service somehow some way um but then you can also check with your bank as well um their fees may be a little bit lower who knows depending upon your bank um depending on what you're going to receive going forward from there um and then are you going to create a website um how are you going to use social media so those are things that you would really want to speak to somebody about who is a professional in that field. Um, I would definitely speak with several people because um, not everybody has the same process and procedure um, when it talks about marketing. Um, so really keep that in mind and look at those pieces. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, are you going to be having uh, marketing material created for you? Are you going to have a buy? Uh, uh, are you going to have a brochure or a banner? Are you going to have something that pops up um, when you go to events? Are you going to need tablecloth runners, things like that? Um, will you need business cards? How are you going to promote yourself in those ways? So um, those will be other aspects that you'll look at as you start to progress into your business. So that is it. That is what I have for you today. If this was helpful. Uh, do me a favor, um, share this. I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to close this out. Sorry. Share this information with others. I would greatly appreciate it. And then again, um, tag me on Instagram, Monica Sanchez, NIA. I would love to help you. I'd uh, love to see what other questions do you have? Um, I really, um, my heart is filled with helping other people to get to where they need to go the next level in their journey. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day.